Hi, so once upon a time in space, there was an entire galaxy full of procedurally generated characters. But these weren't just any procedurally generated characters. In fact, these procedurally generated characters were special. Why, was this, why were they special? Because these procedurally generated characters, unlike many others, had compelling character arcs. So how the heck did that happen? Well, my name is Max Kraminski, and today I'm here to tell you about how the heck that happened. <laughs> Um, so first, I guess I'm going to do a little bit of brief self-intro stuff. Um, I am a PhD student at UC Santa Cruz, specifically the Expressive Intelligence Studio um, in computational media. Um, I'm interested in things like procedural content generation, obviously, um, uh, procedural narrative, interactive narrative in general. I'm also a game designer. Um, one thing that I should note in response to something Ben, I, th I believe, came up in his talk um, is that I am not really a machine learning person, although I do know many of them, and there are many in, among my lab mates. So I can't really help you out with, say, neural networks besides just like pointing you at the people who know more about neural networks than I do. Um, and yeah, so I'm not exactly into roguelikes in a strict sense, but I do tend to make things that are heavy on generated content. Um, and I'm also super interested in anything that involves a computer and a player co-authoring um, content, whether that's a story or whatever. Um, and a lot of roguelikes seem to fit the bill in that sense. Um, one good example of the sort of thing that I tend to make is Epitaph, which um, is a game in which there's a bunch of procedurally generated alien civilizations. You are trying to prevent them from going extinct. Um, and you do that by intervening to teach them new technologies. And hopefully the technologies you teach them do not make them go extinct faster and actually save them from existential risks instead of creating new ones for them. Uh, but the game I'm going to be talking about today mostly is called Star Freighter. And Star Freighter is a game that I was developing, prototyping over the summer. It is currently sort of paused, not really actively in development anymore. But, um, well, I guess we're going to see what it looks like. Um, it was sort of originally a game about this, which is basically the premise is you are a captain of a, of a Star Freighter, hence the title. Um, you're running these jobs of dubious legality for pay and trying to eke out an existence in space. Over time, though, what it turned into as I was prototyping was a more a game about this, really. Um, so the relationships between a crew of quirky misfits, small-scale interpersonal dramas, and sort of slice-of-life stories that just happen to be set in space. Um, so mechanically, Starfighter started out as a Reigns-like. Um, for those who aren't familiar, Reigns is this iPhone game where the premise is basically you're the king. Your subjects bring you all these little requests, and you have to swipe right or left Tinder-style to say yes or no to those requests. Um, in Reigns, there's these four stats at the top of the screen that you're trying to manage. Um, and if any of those go to zero, then it's game over for your current ruler. Um, you die in some horrifying, typically, fashion, and you advance to the next um, ruler in line. Uh, so Starfighter, originally, the, the first prototype looked like this. And you can see that there's actually a lot of inspiration from Reigns in this. Um, there's a little text box at the top and some choices below it that you can use to say yes or no to things that people are bringing you. Um, and there's also these three stat bars, which represent the equivalent of um, Reigns' four needs. The bottom most of these stat bars is the one that we're going to be talking about today. Originally, this represented crew morale, and it was just a number between 0 and 100. So nothing super sophisticated, nothing super fancy, just um, a flat number, basically. Um, so let's look at what Starfighter looks like today. You can see that the user interface has gotten a lot more complicated, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, you can see, for one thing, that the meters have vanished. There's no three simple needs anymore. Um, and actually, the reason for that is because the game has gotten a lot more simulationist. Um, it's modeling state at a much more fine-grained level. And you can see, if we zoom into the crew section here, that each of our crew members actually has their own mood now. And these individual crew moods have now completely subsumed the overall, um, the summary average mood of the crew. So each of these crew members is a generated character. They have a name. They have um, some stats or things that they're good at, which are represented by the little um, emojis next to them. And they also each have their own individual mood, which is influenced by how you're responding to them, how they're in again, and how they're getting along with other crew members right now. And so the central question of Starfighter, as I was developing it, really became for me, how do I get players to become invested in these procedurally generated characters? This is not really a hard problem for authored characters, because there's a lot of things that people like to get invested in in authored media. But when you're procedurally generating these characters, how do you get them to have procedurally interesting story arcs? So we're actually going to take a quick digression and talk about storylets first, because that's a key part of how Starfighter does its narrative stuff. Um, this is a term I'm borrowing from Fallen London and other fail, fail better games. Um, it basically represents a small self-contained unit of story that you can play through. And each of these units of story has some prerequisites that, that dictate when it can be played. So you have to have stats above a certain level in certain particular stats before you can play through one of these. And in 
fall in London, there's also branching and things like that internally that you can do. So each of these is basically a little hypertext node with possible changes to the state based on what you do inside that node. Um, so Starfighter does things a little bit differently. In Fall in London, you can actually choose which storylet to play yourself. Um, in Starfighter, it's actually selecting dynamically from the pool of storylets whose prerequisites are currently met, which one to select and play next for you. And this is an example of what a storylet in Starfighter happens to look like right now. This is actually a pretty simple one. Um, this is actually saying basically there's, there's two crew members on your ship and they have a slightly more positive interaction that makes their relationship slightly more positive overall. Um, so you can see that there's two crew members being selected up top and it's also checking to be sure that these two crew members have not recently had a super negative interaction between them. And then it generates procedurally with a grammar some text to say what's going on and adds a memory to each of those characters that says, oh, we have a slightly more positive relationship now basically. So back to the question of how do we get players to care about procedurally generated characters? Uh, the, my favorite way to answer a question typically is with another question. And so the next thing I found myself asking was how do we get audiences to care about characters in other forms of media? So television, film, all those. And this sort of led me in the direction of this one central principle which everything else I'm gonna talk about pretty much came out of. And that is that relationships take time. So relationships with people and relationships with characters. I think a lot of generative systems tend to fall into a certain trap um, they tend to generate a lot of information up front and then dump it on the player all at once. So, for instance, if you generate a character that has three traits, say they're adaptable, dependable, and um, courageous, then those three traits are typically presented to you all up front, so you can see the list of what the traits are right away. This is good for a few different reasons. The most important one um, is that Tanya Short talks about in this article on maximizing the impact of procedural personalities, which is a fantastic article, by the way, you should all go read it, um, is that Otherwise, players tend to miss the fact that there are traits at all that are mattering and not really realize that the characters have internal lives whatsoever. Um, but there's a problem with this also, and that is that it's not what we expect in real life and it's not what you see in other forms of storytelling. In many cases, it takes a lot of interactions with the character or person distributed out over a long period of time for those traits to be gradually revealed through their actions. So if you meet me for the first time, you're not going to immediately know, oh, Max must be dependable, thrifty, and courageous you have to see those traits revealed in my actions as I, as I take them. <laughs> so in the process of thinking about this principle, I actually came up with five core techniques or five main techniques that I'm gonna be talking about for how to make procedurally generated characters have compelling character arcs. These have been implemented to various extents in Starfighter. Um, I believe the first three are actually implemented in some form. All of them, I'd say, are incompletely implemented, and the last two have not even really been touched code-wise, but they're cool ideas I'd like to try out at some point in the future. Number one of these, without further ado, is using foreshadowing to build anticipation. This is something you see a lot in a lot of different forms of media, um, basically hinting at future events, trying to get players, or well not players in the case of television shows or something like that, but and the audience in general, to develop theories or to develop hypotheses about what they think is going to happen next and want to see if these things were true. The difficulty is that in games, foreshadowing sort of requires you to predict the future, right? So you have to sort of know what the narrative is going to be ahead of time before you can hint at what, it's going, what, what is going to happen in the future. Um, Starfighter actually gets around this with a specific dodge that is generating characters with hidden or latent traits. So a character might have, say, a dark secret, and that might be that they're a fugitive from the law. Or they might have a hidden potential, say that this character would be really good at fighting if they ever tried it, but they've simply never had occasion to or have never had need to, and so they don't even know that they have this potential yet. Um, temporarily concealing these traits, not showing these to the player right away, allows the system to predict the future by dropping hints about these things uh, and then gradually developing these traits over time. So what you can do is you can write storylets that check for the presence of these hidden traits. Say, write a storylet that only fires if this character has the potential to become a great fighter but hasn't yet activated it. And say, you get in a fight, your crew barely survives, this character realizes then, oh, I have the potential to become a great fighter. I should probably learn how to defend myself so this doesn't happen to me ever again. And then you can have another story later on that triggers when the character is, has the desire but not the means to learn how to fight, where a passenger who is really good at martial arts happens to join and, oh, this, this person can take, can take lessons with this person while they're on the ship, basically. Number two is building and subverting players' expectations for surprise. So player expectations in procedural systems have a lot of interactions with randomness and probability, and also with players' perceptions of randomness and probability that tend to be sort of divergent from what actual randomness and probability look like. 
Um, initially, players come into a game with very little sense of what to expect from the generator. They might over time learn to read the generator and get a sense for how likely certain things are to happen. But until they spend some time with the system, they can't really really understand what a normal baseline would look like. That means they can't really recognize special things or exceptional things when they happen. And so you have to spend some time building expectations before you can start subverting them. When you take a look at a, something like this, this is actually just a run of random digits between zero and four that I generated right before this talk. Um, you can see that the, there's three runs here that are highlighted in red. And all of these runs basically talk about, well, what do you think they represent? They represent basically um, runs in which there's only one or two of these five total digits that are possible being displayed for quite a long time. And if any of these runs are the player's first experience of your game, then that's going to be a very different first experience than someone who sees actually like the full variation. They might have a run where they expect, oh, everything in this game is always going to be the same if they have the first run. Or, oh, there's only ever going to be ones and fours. There's only ever going to be zeros and threes. And that can be hard to subvert once you've, once you've built that up. And it's not always clear to players what the possibility space is until they've played enough to see the full random sequence. So one thing you can do is Starfighter sort of puts its hand on the scale, tips the scales, to make it so that the most random choices don't come up first. And the most random, I mean the most exceptional. Um, by saying, we're always going to have, say, the first, there's, there's an event where a passenger can be a pirate or something who tries to hijack the ship. This is never going to happen to you on your first three passengers that you take, ever. Because when it happens, it has to be surprising to matter. And if it's the first thing that happens, it's just going to seem random and, ex and unexceptional. But if it's the thing that happens after you've seen a bunch of safe passengers in a row, then it's going to feel all that much more impactful. And the reason we care about surprise for generating characters and generating procedural character arcs is because when a character surprises you, you start to be more intrigued by that character and then to care a lot more about their fate in general. Okay, number three. This is actually my favorite of them, and this one is about reusing characters instead of throwing them away. Um, another thing that happens a lot in procedural systems is you generate a lot of content up front and then immediately use it for its intended purpose and then you never really use it again. So you might generate a character to fight the player in a, in a battle sort of scene and then this character is defeated and never appears again. Or you might introduce a character for the purpose of a specifically scoped um, plot line or quest line, and then when that plot line or quest line is over, that character never appears again in the game. The problem with this is that it limits the amount of time that the player can spend with any given character, and thus limits the amount of development that that character can possibly ever receive. So what Starfighter does is instead of reusing characters, well, instead of throwing characters away, it reuses them. Um, so for instance, even in, a character, even in a situation where you have to fight a character, say it's a bounty hunter who's pursuing you, um, if you manage to defeat them, there's very good odds that they'll manage to either run away or survive somehow, and then they'll come after you again later at some unspecified date in the future. Likewise, if you have passengers who you've just finished dropping off, or you have crew members who have left the ship for whatever reason, they can actually they stay in the database instead of being removed from it, and they can be brought back in different roles later on. So someone you might not have expected to ever see again can return unexpectedly at precisely the worst possible moment. <laughs> Even the merchants that you interact with at each planet are persistent and you have a track reputation with those merchants. So if you ever find yourself backtracking, you might have to deal with the repercussions of things that you did in the past that were maybe not the most ethical things you could, could have possibly done in your business dealings. You can also almost think of this like a generalization of this Shadow of Mortar Nemesis system that applies to not just your rivals, but to all kinds of characters, both your friends, your enemies, anyone in between. Number four is using character focus to deepen characterization. Um, character focus is some, it's one of these, it's one of the two that I have not yet implemented in Starfighter in any real way. Um, this is something you see a lot in television shows, I think, and other sort of serial forms of media. Basically what happens is you see a character being given focus, in quotation marks, for an episode, or sometimes even for a whole arc of several episodes. And during that, during that period of focus, you learn more about that character specifically. You learn some about their backstory, you might see their interactions with other characters you don't often see them on screen with. Um, you might see more about their personality traits, their motivations for doing the things that they do, and their reasons for even being on the show in the first place. This can also appear in the form of relationship focus, where instead of one character being spotlighted, it's the relationship between two or a few characters. This is a really good way to make you feel like you understand a character better. It gives you more of a connection to that character. And one of the ways this is commonly used is it'll probably make you much sadder also when this character eventually gets killed a couple episodes down the line. So how do you implement this in a game? The first way that I can think of, or the primary way that I can think of, is to have a procedural storytelling system that has a, a notion of which characters are currently in focus. 
Um, and then what you can have is you can have it as, act as a puppet master or a drama manager to randomly upweight the selection of storylets that involve these characters. So a storylet that involves a focused character or a focused group of characters is much more likely to be selected than a storylet that doesn't. This is not something I'm currently doing in Starfighter, but it's definitely something I'd like to explore in the future. And of course, number five, this one is entirely speculative and I haven't really even touched it yet, um, but it seems interesting so I decided to throw it in there. And this is the concept of generating a good end and a bad end for every significant character. Um, to explain what I mean by this, we're actually going to refer to a blog post by Emily Short, which um, was a general tip on authoring characters for interactive narrative. Um, and the idea is basically that you as an author can figure out the best and worst possible outcomes for a character, write those down in advance, and then give the player ways specifically to bring about either one or both of those outcomes. You can do things like making the goals of multiple characters fundamentally incompatible, and then making the, character, uh, making the player choose between them. Or you can also challenge the player to resolve a tense situation in such a way that all the characters are eventually okay with it. How would you do this in a procedural system? So um, I think this can also be applied to storytelling for generated characters by, for each significant character, using the, same, the sort of hidden traits framework I discussed earlier with the dark secrets, the hidden pasts, things like that, and generating ahead of time the, um, the best and worst possible outcomes for this character, and then providing the player with storylets that let them realize one or both of these outcomes. And again, this is another thing Starfighter does not currently do, but that might be neat to see. So those are five techniques for crafting, compel crafting compelling character arcs for procedurally generated characters. Um, we're actually going to look at a quick example right now. It says examples plural, but there's only one of them, um, of how this might play out in an actual story in the game. So on your way out of port, you pick up a passenger. You decide to stop by the salvation system along the way. Your passenger seems nervous, and they suggest an alternate or longer route. When you get to the Salvation Spaceport, your ship is stopped for a random search. As it turns out, the passenger was in fact a fugitive from the law. They had a dark secret. And so you have the choice at this point of hiding them in a secret compartment or turning them in for a reward. So how do the systems that I just talked about interact with this storyline? Well, let's go, by line, let's go line by line. On your way out of port, you pick up a passenger. This passenger is obviously a procedurally generated character like everyone else in the game. Um, you have a plan to, to go in a specific direction, to go to a specific spaceport, and your passenger seems nervous. This is actually foreshadowing a work. What the system is doing here is it's, it's got a story that's been written for, oh, this character is a fugitive, and they recognize that the destination is a heavily policed spaceport. That means that they're going to act nervous and maybe try to get out of going in that particular direction. So you have this foreshadowing of, oh, this character might have a reason for not wanting to do this thing, but they're being very cagey about why. When you arrive at the spaceport, your ship is stopped for a random search. This is another storylet that cascades from the first one. And in fact, what's happening here is Starfighter chooses to um, increase the weight of being stopped for a random search when you actually have someone who is a fugitive or something that is contraband aboard your ship. Because it's not as interesting when you have a lot of instances of, oh, we get to the place we're searched, nothing actually happens because we're not doing anything illegal. But it's much more dramatic when you have something that actually is important to hide and they are looking for it. <laughs> um, and this is what I talked about earlier with the hidden traits. The passenger had a dark secret. That way they were fugitive from the law. And so finally, you have this choice of hiding them in a secret compartment or turning them in for a reward. This is sort of a manual implementation of Emily Short's concept of giving you the concept, giving you the ability as a player to choose between the best or worst possible outcome for this character. So the best possible outcome for this character might be something like, I am reunited with my family safely. The worst possible might be, I am turned into the police. And you, in this case, have the choice to turn them into the police and bring about their worst possible outcome. So that is everything I have right now. Thank you. Um, any questions? Hello, hello. OK. Um, so when you put, I guess, that generative system into a game, eventually, like, somebody's going to go through all the storylets and then go write a wiki, and someone's going to be like, hey, I have a passenger, look up the wiki. Oh, he's suspicious. That means like he might be a fugitive. Okay, I already know this dude's deal. Like, and then it transforms into, okay, what do I want from this reward? Let me look up the probabilities here. Like, is that sort of intrinsic to encoding that story in a game, or like, is there a way you can see to get around that? 
Um, the primary way I can think of to get around that is not to try, I guess, um, and to just have enough storylets that players are tired of the game already by the time they get to the point of wanting to strategize so specifically. Um, I think that in a lot of cases, um, we tend to worry too much about players spoiling themselves or learning about the game outside of the game. And there's some people who are going to do that no matter what, I think. And if it's their first time playing through, then the only thing they spoiled is their own experience. Um, and if they're that invested in the game that they want to strategize about it, then I think that giving them the ability to make those resources and use them on their own is fine. There's no problem with that. Other questions? So what do you think of, um, uh, rather than procedurally generating, or in, as well as procedurally generating, kind of back deriving the characters and the secret traits that you want from what you need right now? So you're going to salvation, so you're going, well, we probably need something exciting to happen here, so why don't we have that character always have that secret like story? And is that cheating, or um, is that acceptable for the benefits of the plot? Sure, so I would consider that probably cheating in the sense that it doesn't fit the way that I want the system to work. Um, but there's no reason why it couldn't work in some contexts. I think that that's a sort of a different, the other direction of, of looking at this narrative management or this drama management sort of system of deciding what is the most dramatic thing to have happen here and then doing it. Um, I'm aiming for a more simulationist sort of, the state is set up a certain way first and then things fall out of that state. But there's, there's no problem with the other approach, it's just a different way of doing things. Anyone else? Okay, cool. thank you so much.